Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chun Chun, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. So today we're finally getting to the last part of this asset creation process, which I'm going to talk about a little bit about UV, um, the texturing process, and a little bit about rendering as well. So for the UV of the asset, in general, it's quite straightforward. As you can see, the base modeling is quite simple. The only thing I really need to talk about is how to deal with these thousands of pieces of little tube shaped things. So I'm actually gonna use a little trick inside of a UV layout. So I have separated this geometry into half and half because uh, when there's too many geometry inside a UV layout, sometimes uh, either takes a long time to process or it doesn't process at all. So I kind of split geometry up. So we're just gonna deal with this half for now. And uh, inside a UV layout, I can go to the pack dropdown menu. And if I select my geometry and choose new box, UV layout create a box shape around the UV that I've selected. And then I just have to select pack all. And after that, UV layout will spread out all the overlapped UV into a pretty organized layout. After that, I just need to save out that geometry and import that geometry into my Maya scene. As I mentioned last time, I UV'd all the individual elements before I ever started duplicating them. That's why all the UVs are overlapping each other. And that's why I need a UV layout's help to spread them out because I know for every uh, individual UV, they will have kind of a different color assigned to them. So I can't have them overlapping each other. So after I imported geometry again, this is the final UV organization that I have for the entire shoe. I also separate the UV according to the color variation. In general, I see a white part of the fabric and the darker part of the fabric. So I kind of separate them that way. Uh, when I texture, it will be easier to put on a tileable texture for them. Now the UV work is done, I have created a very simple AI standard shader for uh, different parts of the shoe according to what kind of material they have. I haven't started texturing yet, but for this asset, I wanted to test out a shader first to make sure all my shader settings and the base color is somewhat accurate to the material. And then I'm going to use that as a reference when I create my texture. So this is what the current shader looks like with a one HDR, a white background, and just flat colors. As you can see, the metal part of the shoe is looking extremely odd. Um, there is no displacement map on it yet, and the shape is super flat, so it probably doesn't represent what the material actually looks like. So I think the next thing I have to do is just to assign the displacement map first. So here's the setting I use inside of ZBrush to export my 32-bit EXR displacement maps. Um, I have been using this setting for a while now. It seems to work for me every time. Back in Arnold, I'm going to connect the displacement I just created. Make sure that you set the file tiling mode to UDM and also I'm only going to connect the red channel into the displacement just to make sure that I'm using the luminance value. Rendering again, I can see my displacement now and I think it reflects what I see inside of ZBrush. And I think the shader still look extremely odd and I think it's because the metalness of my shader is not high enough. So once I push that to 100%, I feel like the material is starting to look a lot more like my reference. Now I'm happy with the shader, I'm going to bake a couple masks that I know I'm going to use. I have demonstrated the baking process inside our Substance Painter many times, so we don't need to talk about the basic baking. This is the first mask I created, it's to mimic the dark detail inside of those uh, sculpted areas. Inside of Mari, I'm going to import those the substance masks first just to have them there so I can start to build my actual channels. 
I'm going to use radio transmitter node again, so I know I can link these masks to wherever I need inside of the node graph and not make a huge mess. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do before I import the substance mask is to make all the individual masks for different material. Instead of Mari, I always like to just combine my entire asset into one OBJ. So the only thing that's going to separate different material are the material masks. All the basic material masks are finished, I'm going to import my substance mask. I didn't quite record how I created that mask, but the process was super simple. I think I just used some cavity dirt smart masks and adjusted a little bit, and that's basically what I have. Here is what it looks like, and it seems like as long as we have this main mask, we basically can capture the look of the shoe. Uh, the texture process of this thing is going to be extremely straightforward. To me, this thing is more look depth heavy, that's why I wanted to test out the shader first before I create my texture. Now I have all those supporting masks ready, I'm going to start to build my diffuse color. Uh, I'm not going to narrate the entire process, I'm just going to let you watch, but basically for every different material, I just used one tileable. There's no extra painting required for this asset. The key to get the look right is just to match uh, the value of my diffuse, bump, and uh, roughness to what I already have inside the shaders that already works. Another thing I want to mention for my tileable is that if you just look at the reference, the basic material is basically chrome. So um, I feel like a lot of people is going to choose to just use a flat color to achieve that look, which I think you can get there pretty much. But for me, I never like to use flat color for my um, texture. So even if um, by the end, I don't need any specific detail from the texture. I would rather still use something that has some sort of detail on it just to have some micro uh, detail and breakup. Same for the leather texture. If you look at the reference, um, you can tell it's leather from the material, but actually there's no strong pattern to it. So I just chose the pretty generic leather pattern. To get a look right like this one, it's actually more about being subtle. Um, if you, I don't see any strong dirt or uh, scratches or kind of damage, I'm not going to add those. The trickier part of the texturing of this asset is the fabric part of it. Um, I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to call those things on top, but I know um, I see a lot of color variation inside those things, so I know that I probably will have to build maybe four to five different uh, color variation and value difference and assign them to different pieces to get that look. I'm going to use this fabric as a base and I'm going to merge a couple different colors on top. Actually, I decided to switch position, make the darker color as the base.
I'm going to start to adjust these colors a little bit, try to get it match the reference better. And after that, I added the brighter part of the fabric as well. The next thing I'm going to do is to create the dark area of the chrome. I'm going to use a darker material tileable and I'm going to assign the masks that were created in Substance Painter. So on this mask that I baked, there's one part I need to get rid of is the dark uh, kind of like outline on the inside of the shoe that's definitely not on the reference. So I'm going to merge it with a new paint note. I'm just going to paint it out. The next thing I'm going to do is to add a little bit of a shine to the edge area of the metal. So I baked another Substance Painter mask which covers all the edge area. For the diffuse color, I'm just going to reuse the metal material and add HSV to it. Add a brighter edge color like this, it really helps define the shape of the object. The next thing I have to do is to create all the stitches for the leather. I have demonstrated this process a few times in the past. Basically, I'm just going to use a normal brush inside a Substance Painter and I'm going to assign a stitch alpha to it and I'm just going to draw the stitch. Since I only need to create the mask for the stitch here and I'm going to import the mask uh, back into Mari, I'm just going to use a black fill layer and a white fill layer to demonstrate what the stitch is supposed to be. This is what the stitch mask looks like once I import it into Mari. I'm going to create another layer of fabric material and assign this mask to it and give it a different color so we can actually visually see the stitch in my diffuse map. And that is basically the last element I created for this project. That is the entire process of how I created this 3D asset. If you watched all three videos, thank you very much for sticking to the end.
It was a very enjoyable process for me, and I really appreciate、uh, Alexander McQueen's designs. I was actually surprised that how many people think this design is ugly. And also, my last couple videos wasn't doing great, maybe because people just don't like a design like this. And for me, I think it looks beautiful, and I had a great time making it. I was pretty happy with the end result. And、uh, if just a few people can get something out of these videos, it's worth it. That is everything I have for you today. And if you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I am tackling something new for my next video, so I will have to spend some time to just learn myself. So the next video is probably gonna come out a little bit later, but I will see you when it's finished. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one.